BizBash Live Los Angeles returns Wednesday, July 18th to the California Market Center. Have you secured your spot? Register now at bizbash.com slash expo LA with code gather for special rates. Are you, are you nine, eight, okay, seven, so we're going to be happy. Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. Here are your hosts, BizBash CEO David Adler and Editor-in-Chief Beth Kormanick. Welcome to this edition of Gather Geeks by BizBash. My co-host, Beth Kormanek, is on assignment. So joining me today will be our assistant editor, Ian Zaleya. Hi, David. Hey, Thanks for having how me. How are you? To, uh, Ian, you were at C2 with me, and I want to know what your first impression was before we get into our guest. I was. Um, yeah, it was my first time there. And, you know, it was unlike any other conference that I've attended or covered. Really? Um, You've seen everything. Yeah. Working at BizBash, I have. (laughs) Um, Yeah, there was just, I don't want to say overwhelming, but there was just a lot going on from the moment you walk in. And um, I think when I, before I went, you know, I saw the lineup of speakers and that alone, you know, you had Snoop Dogg and Chelsea Manning and just um, speakers from a variety of industries that alone to me seemed like a draw for a lot of people who um, were attending, but you go inside and it's just, you see, it's almost like an adult playground in a way. <laughs> that was my impression. There's a ton of, there were just a ton of experiences um, that you kind of had no idea what they were until you went and did them or went and talked to someone who was working that experience. And now you know why we've chosen that as yeah. one of our top conferences in North America for, I think, four out of the last five years. Yeah, like for that. sure. It's great. So it's it's interesting. I mean, I um, think of C2 as probably one of the most innovative conferences in North America. Uh, the uh, Today, we're going to be interviewing Richard St. Pierre, the president and chief executive officer of C2. He oversees C2's international development and mobilized the brightest minds in, in, in the world to, to gather, to sort of speak to these audiences. Uh, and it really is, I guess you describe it as a three-day immersive gathering of over 7,000 incredible people from industries who connect, collaborate, and build the new sets of tools they need to create actionable solutions for the challenges of our times. It actually is a real comment. You think that just hyperbole, but it actually works in this particular case. Uh, there, you know, it's sort of like, where do you get your best ideas? He says the, the, from you'll, you'll hear from this interview. Is it at the shower? Is it in the office or is it suspended in a net 18 feet above ground? So each year that the C2 lab devises a new atypical brainstorming environment designed to propel participants out of their usual frame of reference. It's, uh, you found that as well, right? Yeah, for sure. For sure. There seemed to the whole idea of like having a different um, out of the box environment to facilitate conversation. That was um, a lot of what I saw. Well, let's Uh, listen to Richard as he talks about this conference. Have a listen. You've been doing this for how many years now? It's been seven years. So we've been at it for eight years because the first edition took us more than a year and a half to create. And so after seven years, do you think it's working? If you take the big picture step back, what have you accomplished in your in the bigger picture of how you change the world? Uh, first, I'm absolutely convinced that it is working, and I have so many proof points. Tell me. Um, so, two things. First, even though it's dubbed one of the premier uh, and uh, So even though it is voted even number one in North America year after year, our purpose is not to do an event. It's actually to propel the economy and society forward. That's the root of why everything we see around us, uh, that's the very purpose. If we simply wanted to do an event, we'd be copycats of so many other event planners, for example. So we don't consider ourselves that. So why is that important is because everything we do is for that purpose of propelling the economy and society 
So the first thing we do is that we say, hmm, we're all humans. So we not, we want to communicate. We want to talk. So we create a dialogue environment. What's different between C2 and any other, uh, anybody else is the fact that we're successfully putting dialogues of thousands of companies and people at the same time in a very, very, very short time, three days. And that's what creates impact. Just to give you a sense, we do have speakers and like renowned speakers as well, but we have a hundred of them. When we talk about dialogue experience, collaborative experience and so on, we have 43,000. Imagine this, you see the ratio? Instead of putting the spotlight on what's happening on stage, where typically all the money is spent, we put the spotlight on the participants. And by the way, we call them participants, not visitors. Because if you just come here and want to sit in a dark room listening to someone, yeah, that's something you could do, but it's not the environment is built so that you interact with others. And so what about dialogue that changes the world? Like what is it, how does it trickle out? So um, I'll answer in two fronts on that one. Um, normally we, we want closer metrics, right? So every year we measure the economic impact of what we do here. So it's a hardcore like financial metric. So we ask a third party, uh, PricewaterhouseCooper in this, in this case, to survey all the participants six months after the event. And did you do a deal? Did you hire people? Did, do you have investments and so on? And every year after year, we get more and more investments. So if I look at uh, last year, we were close to $700 million worth of deals that happened in 72 hours. So that dialogue right. created between two people who didn't know each other, ended up changing the world of that company because they signed a deal. You, you might argue, oh, well, you can do that at trade shows, but at trade shows, you don't have that rate of pickup and you don't have like thousands and thousands of coordinated and curated dialogue. That's what, that's our very purpose. Well, you know, Scott Heffernan, who does Meetup, has this favorite line that I've stolen called the most powerful word in the English language is the word let's. Because whenever people get together, they say, let's go to lunch, let's go to dinner, let's start a revolution. And what I see here is precisely that happening all over the place. The nuance here is that we create a platform right if you go to all those big conference they're trying to like they're pushing a, their their through, agenda their agenda their, we don't have an agenda we pr if you look at the theme of c2 this year's transformative collision let's face it yeah there's no economic there's theme no economic can, i mean how broad gonna, a yeah, spectrum yeah. do you carry out it, it goes from economics to religion really right, right? Um, and that's why, by the way, this is, we've had financial gurus, uh, Jim Coulter was on stage yesterday mm -hmm. at the same stage, a few hours later, we had the uh, Chelsea Manning right. and it made sense. The people in the room understood the connection between the two. And it's not because they operate in the same space, let's face it. So it makes sense when you're trying to say, okay, the whole purpose of this is to create a dialogue. The first thing you, ha you need to do is connect two people. And then the next step you need to do is open their minds. If they're going to talk about you know, what car and what family you, you have children or not, I mean, that's not really a creative way of interacting. But if you say, what's your boldest dream, man? And how about we make it 10 times more? So that's the starting point of the conversation. That's actually a question that we ask. Mm -hmm. How do you make your dream 10 times more intense than the one you had dreamt about? Imagine two people not know, knowing each other, asking themselves that question. Talk about creativity there. Something emerges. I had a, if I may, sure, uh, yeah. I had, a, I won't name her, but yesterday evening, um, uh, the wife of every, a very well-known person came to me and embraced me and she was crying. I said, okay, can I help you? And she said, I've been in the shadow of my husband for the past 40 years. I came to see two. I was dialoguing with people. They didn't know that I was in the shadow of my husband and I discovered myself. She wanted to go back to school. She wanted to uh, take charity work. I mean, her life had changed and she had been here a day and a half. So if we can have that impact on a person, imagine when we say we play our part in changing the world, I bet that that lady is gonna say yes. Absolutely. But the thing is, it, 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 it's fun 
it's experiential, but it's experiential with a purpose because every aspect, just talk about the whole concept of walking into the door and having the rotating um, uh, sort of platform disrupt the way you're even thinking walking in the door. What was the thinking behind that, which was brilliant, by the way? Yeah. So the theme this year is transformative collision, right? So you have to face the fact that there's a transformation happening and it collides with maybe something that you're used to. So how about you lose balance when you walk in? Which is exactly what happened. Exactly. So if you step on this turning platform, it turns slowly, yeah. but just fast enough so that you lose your balance yeah. as soon as you set foot on it. And by losing balance, you say, oh, I've just been disrupted. Mm -hmm. So everybody in the world... So everything is thought out here. Of course. I mean, there is, I mean, that's what I love about this. I mean, my friends say that, you know, decor is about the neuroscience of, of, of creating cues to get people to talk to each other, to experience things in a temporary environment, to get them, everything's about getting them to talk to each other, I assume. Exactly. We're actually, um, this is very human. So the number one quality decide this year that people tell me, they said, I sense emotion. When did you go to a business conference when people say the word that comes out is emotion, right? But when you think about it, the senses, the eyes, uh, definitely you see colors everywhere and so on, but there's also contemporary art everywhere. Believe it or not, there are 40 pieces of contemporary art all around the site. They're lent by uh, collectors because they think that this art will open the minds of people walking in. Uh, so that goes with smell. So in the bathrooms, we do have people handling the bathroom in a special way and we change the smell depending on the day we are. Really? So it goes to that level. The drinks that you've given, right? Certain people have colors on them. And when the barman sees that color, the drink will be associated with the color of the person. And how, what is that uh, based on? Well, it's, it's simple. When, you know, typically when you register to a normal conference, you put in your name, your title, right. your business. So we do that because we have to know who you are. But we also ha ask you, you know, what's your favorite color? Uh, what was your favorite childhood food? Or so if they say M&Ms, well, I can tell you that one of the 440 concierge will likely end up with uh, sending M&M to that person at one point during the journey. So you're really personalizing the experience in ways that you keep getting better and better at. Personalization, if you want to connect with someone, you cannot deliver a mass message, right? You can deliver a, a, a message to a thousand people, but you're not sure it will touch that individual. But bring them a piece of NMNM &M at just the right time during the day, and then it's gonna transform, wow, I'm, I've just lived an experience, and it will emotionally connect that person with the interaction that just happened. So yes, we go to that level, but that is not only for the persons, it, it, it is also for the partners of C2. You know, like most conferences, they have like the silver package, the gold package, right. and the more you pay, the bigger the logo. Well, guess what? If you look around here, you, I'll challenge you to find that many logos. And when we go and speak to them, and I've done that many times, you go to a partner and say, hey, you should participate at C2. By the way, we say participate. We don't say sponsorship, right? Mm -hmm. And then we say, uh, by the way, we have a few rules. We're asking you for half a million dollars for your participation. You cannot, you cannot display your logo and you cannot use PowerPoint. So after they tell me you're absolutely crazy, man, what do we say? We say, how... How would you like to engage to a different level with your potential clients, your current clients, uh, people that may criticize your product? Like, let me give you an example. We had a partner last year that says they operate in the city area. So they offer services to cities. And they said, Richard, our real problem is that we cannot speak to mayors. Why? Because there's too much controversy. The mayors, there, there's corruption scandal all around the world, all those things. And we said, well, your end customer are mayors, right? Yeah, but we cannot speak to them. Well, that's something that C2 can deliver. What we did, we did invite the mayor and they came, mm -hmm. but we've put them in round tables with citizens, academics, students, and so on, right? So that means that the round table conveyed the message from a variety of people. So that company, when they were discussing about the product, they could all 
actually sell. Imagine this, the citizen was saying, hey, I'd buy that, I'd like that. The mayor is sitting right beside that person. So he hears from his citizen saying, I'd buy that. Imagine the mayor's mindset after that meeting. It changes completely the dynamic. Absolutely. Invest in yourself and your staff with self-paced online event education designed to fit into your busy schedule. Subscribe to the Event Leadership Institute for only $25 per month and gain access to an extensive on-demand video library of classes, as well as interviews with industry leaders. Best of all, you can watch classes in small pieces or all at once. For more information, visit eventleadershipinstitute.com. It's so it's so interesting the way you do it, but you also have other collaboration techniques. I saw a few today about the light, where people go into the um, color of the answer that they choose on a quiz. Talk about that as a collaboration tool. So it's, it's conflict have, resolution in a really interesting way. Um, and that one you, you've hit the mark. I'll talk about two. Uh, so we have a variety of collaborative experience. The one you just uh, described is called our labs. The lab uh, you're referring to is called barom- barometers. So basically, you put 100 people that do not know anything about, about, about themselves or each other. So it's randomly picked. And we display on a big screen questions that they have to answer. So for example, you like blue, step to the right. You like red, step to the left. And we go on with questions like this until we have 10 groups of 10 people. So what happens? 10 people that did not know each other now have all a common interest in the topic that's been discussed. And the topics go from circular economy to uh, geopolitical challenges, all those things. So you have 10 groups of people and then we bring them to the conversation market. So there's rooms, 10 tables, they're all around. They have 17 minutes to discuss question that goes uh, one step deeper with people uh, with, with people that have a common interest. Imagine what comes out of this. You actually have action items mm-hmm. that come out of this because people didn't know each other existed in the first place. And you document it? Of course. And we, then that's a whole story in itself. Absolutely. We have a group of editors. We have 32 around the site. So they're kind of the journalists taking notes, not of what the speaker is saying, what the participants are saying. So out the output of that workshop is actually recorded so we can have the essence of what was created because we're not just innovating and just pushing the envelope a little bit. No, 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 no. All the, those questions are devised to create a new, a new space because with bold questions that the, that, that faces the world, we have to create a new path. That's what ultimately our, what our goal is. I mean, it's really crowdsourcing to the nth degree. Well, uh, in many cases, I think, um, you know, we've been talking about social media and the digital realm for the last decade. But if you go back, everything I've just said, it's the same concept, but analog. It's really people meeting each other. There's a lab that is actually uh, quite, uh, I was, um, I was not questioning it, but I say, hmm, that's going to be an interesting one. So it's called transparency. So imagine a box where there's only mirrors. You fit in 12 people in that box and there's some difficult questions to be answered. And I know uh, somebody from Dubai a few hours ago that I've met participated to that and it really, really challenged him. So in that box, there's only mirrors and 10 people. Then there's a moderator asking a fairly simple but somewhat nasty question. For example, you don't know anyone in this room, but if you had to pick one, who would you start a business with? Imagine what happens. You have one guy or one lady that aggregates a lot of people and then two or three that are left out by their own. Do you imagine the sense, like yeah. the oddness of the situation yeah. and go down that path for like 15, 20 minutes? When they walk out of that lab, they're saying, hmm, what uh like the biases the stereotypes uh everything is challenged and this for us we call collision of ideas so if you want that creativity juice to come out collision of idea needs to happen and how do you do that you need to put people right at the edge of their comfort zone because if you stay in the comfort zone well it's going to be mostly likely you know the typical answer that come out 
Is this kind of like when you talk about brainstorming and it's there's no bad ideas? There actually are sort of things that happen that are not great. So it makes you change your perspective, it sounds like. Um, yes, but I, I think, you know, when we talk about brainstorming, we often talk about post-its, right? And yes. how we push ideas and yeah. so on. The problem with that, and it, it works, right? we use it ourselves. The problem with that is that until you confront the person in a nice way, yeah. right? Uh, last year, we had people up 50 feet up in the air. Yeah. So why a brainstorm 50 feet up in the air? Why is because you're scared, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. When you're thinking at the same time, why are you talking to me about uh, the implication of business and poverty when I'm scared for my life 50 feet uh, up in the air? And by the way, we put a mirror at the bottom so it even looks higher. The answer that we get from the people up there is completely different than doing the same thing on the ground. So post it is okay, but how about you challenge even the emotional root of the person? Oh yeah, no. it the, what you write on that post it yeah. is completely different. That's so interesting. Do you? I noticed that also you are now expanding and you're also partnering with groups like IMEX and bringing some of these proven techno techniques. How does that work? I mean, it seems like you, it's pretty radical. You said the event industry is kind of behind the times a little bit, and you're trying to make them more progressive when you introduce these kind of techniques to a sort of a traditional model, how do they react? Mm -hmm. um, first, I think the model I've just described is the model for the 21st century. So that means that the industry is stuck Absolutely. in the 20th I've, century. We've been choosing you as number one for years and we see it, but this is not, you know, the industry is morphing together and it, and it, and it, and it's just the new way people work, the new way people live, the new way people, uh, want to f see authority or not see authority um, it's it's we think it's a really good model too so I'm um, totally prejudiced <laughs> I think <laughs> thank you for that uh, that being said I think um, uh, it's a complex thing to do why because the mindset of the industry is focusing on the right wrong spot I, I started by saying that all the money budget effort typically is on the main stage and how much is on the crowd? Well, is the coffee going to be a bit better or the donuts will have some creamy stuff on yeah, top of it? Yeah, it's all logistics. No it's, it, that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah. If we start with saying we want to put people together and the stage is the secondary thought yeah, yeah. by which we're going to make everything gel together, it completely changed the dynamic. So if I talk to someone who's been doing this for 30, 40 years and bringing people to events, they're saying, hmm, how do I start doing that? And you're talking to me about partnerships. I, I, you, do you mean that every of the 47 partners that I have now, I will have to curate an experience for each one of them? You bet. Not only that, you have to curate an experience for every one of the 4,000 participants in the room. And that becomes mind boggling because the structure itself of the company is not fit, does not align with that concept. And we do have a lot of companies in the event business that says, hmm, we want to embrace your culture because we've been trying to copycat you guys by having more post-its and it's not working. Right. So C2 has an approach that is different. And guess what? The approach is that we're not an event company, right? We're trying to, to, to chat, to, to. Well, you, I call what you do, you're collaboration artists more than you are actually. You, it's a whole different level of, of interaction. How did it work at IMAX? Like, what did you do to, when you introduced, um, I know that you introduced some of those hanging chairs and things like that and brainstorming. So IMAX was in Frankfurt two weeks ago. Uh, we were approached by IMAX because of the, let's say the, 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 how much the industry is talking about C2. I'm very humble, by the way, by this industry uh, using C2 as a benchmark. We hope we're helping that out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, you are. Uh, but uh, when you go to uh, Doha and Qatar yeah, they, and you walk out the plane and you say, I'm with C2 and people say, hey, you're the reference we were yeah. looking for. I mean, let's face it, it's very humbling. Yeah. I mean, we're a small company here based in Montreal. And when you have that kind of, of clout in the event industry, um, that means that we're doing something right. That also means that this industry is searching for a, a new path forward. And we're very open in sharing and partnering with them in uh, engaging in that path. 
you were mentioning that we go international. Um, IMEX was one of the stepping stone of that, but we've done 20 events around the world over the past year alone. And so that includes uh, Budapest, Amsterdam, Los Angeles, Melbourne, um, all those uh, areas that we've been to is because the client, so privately held client in this case, um, they wanted to transform. So EY is one of our large clients. Michelin is another one of our large clients. In both cases, they said, the way we've been doing it doesn't work anymore. Our clients of me, EY or Michelin, they're not coming. They don't, when we invite them, they simply don't want to attend because they find it not only boring, they don't see a benefit for themselves. How about we transform? So Michelin is a good example. They said, What's your show, Michelin? Well, we've been talking about tires for 18 years. Mm -hmm. Can you really be surprised that people don't want to speak about tires now, right? <laughs> We're in 2018. Mm -hmm. How about we, we talk about sustainable mobility? Oh, yeah, sustainable mobility. So we take the high road. Yeah, tires are still important. But what is the social implication, the uh, advent of AI and uh, self-driving cars? It's a higher cars. level thinking that, It's a that high makes level people thinking. want to engage. Yes. So putting people 50 feet up in the air to talk about tires does not make sense. Doing the same activity, but talking about how the differences in mobility, uh, self-driving cars and so on influences society, putting them in that same environment makes total sense. That's why it works. So in wrapping up, you have all these sort of really cool experiences here is it the lab to bring them to the to the other places so that you know that they work because you're taking a lot of risk here you you see stuff here that you never see anywhere else for the first time um i think the foundation of creativity everything i've just said right applies to us as well so the first rule we say to ourselves every year after c2 is that we start anew There's nothing that you saw at a C2 one year that it will carry forward in the following year. However, we will hone what we learn from what we do here in Montreal, in Melbourne in October, in Dubai in February, etc. So we are basically taking the show on the road. So what we create here in Montreal is so totally new, it's totally risk-taking, but what we see that works, we push more on it. What we see work less well, we we try to redesign and we do circumvent the planet once and then we carry forward and do the same in 2019 and on who is who is analyzing what doesn't work are you are you, you are you do you have people that is it through the through the price waterhouse scoopers surveys or is it through uh some uh, people just watching what's going on down here on the floor Actually, we, we have a team of concierge, like I said, um, 440 of them. They're not really concierges, though. They, well, that's <laughs> the it thing. sounds like they're, they're, they're doing analysis. They're doing analysis. So there are uh, a group of people, a few dozens, that are actually surveying people as they are having the experience. So right at the, uh, at the closing of the experience, but also in a more typical survey. So right now we're at day three. I can tell you that day one was 70% people saying, I'm extremely satisfied. So on a scale of one to five, 70% of the people said, I'm extremely satisfied with what I've lived. So if that's not a testament of this is working, I don't know what is. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, okay, so as we wrap up, I can go on for about 100 years with you. How do people come to it next year? I mean, there is such FOMO about this uh, that I would urge everybody in the event industry, they have to experience C2. I certainly urge uh, and welcome everyone. Uh, obviously, we sell tickets. But um, we have C2 Montreal that happens every May. We have C2 Melbourne that happens every October. And we're at IMAX, both in, in Frankfurt and in uh, Las Vegas. So there's four touch points a year in, with which we want to engage. And dialogue amongst the people also applies to us and interacting with the industry. So everyone's welcome. What's the website? Say the, the name of the website. C2.bbiz. B -I -C. C2 dot biz. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And uh, we will, uh, I'm going to go experience more of the uh, parts of the show right now. Thank you, David. Thank It's you. been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. Bye. So Ian, did you think that, you know, the first question we asked them was, does, does it work? Did it work? What do you think? From what I saw, 
I would think it works. Um, I mean, the moment I walked in, one of the first things you see after stepping um, over the rotating platform, um, there were these cabins, sort of these transparent, um, different color uh, cylinders, kind of. They were made out of plastic, but people were just having, people could hold meetings in there. And, um, you know, that right off the bat just presents as, like, this is a conference that, it's providing something different for these people. Um, and then I think the other main thing that I noticed was there was a whole area where attendees could schedule brain dates. Um, so based on, uh, I guess, the interest that they put in their um, attendee profile, uh, people working that section would pair them up. And um, I got to tour sort of the brain date um, area. And it was kind of just all different types of seating, a uh, multi-level area where people were just talking about what they wanted to talk about. I love what, so. what Richard said about that it's you make a choice as an attendee because there's not enough space for everybody to go to everything. Exactly. And so it was, and, and it, it sort of changed the way you think about it because it really isn't about what's on the main stage. As he says very, very clearly, it's about the people who are conversing mm -hmm. and are creating deals and are changing their lives. I um, mean, it really is. I mean, when collaboration is sort of the centerpiece, I mean, it's my whole thing, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, that I think collaboration can change the world. And they're actually one of the few engineers uh, that know how to do it well. So um, this is at this point, I usually ask Beth, like, what's going on at BizBash? Do you have any uh, what's coming up? What are you writing about? Um, well, I'm writing about C2. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, um, a lot of other Canada experiences. Um, I'm currently writing about something that American Express Canada did in Toronto because um, they do a lot of pop up experiences whenever they're launching a new campaign or product. So I just wrote about um, there was a pop up experience that they did. They collaborated with local artists to create sort of like a 29 rooms inspired uh, exhibit um, based on each of what they call their consumer passion points. So there were like travel theme rooms, food theme rooms, um, very Instagrammable. So, so I mean, you're a, our editor in Canada and I guess you see, I mean, the creativity there is pretty incredible from yeah, what we see at sure. C2. I mean, I, I, they really, they really have got it going on. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's great. Uh, so thank you so much, Ian, for helping today, Pinch Hinting. And uh, until next time, uh, we always say at the end, gather on. Gather on. Thanks great. for having Thanks. me. Thanks, Ian. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a reading and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. Don't forget to register for BizBash Live Los Angeles on July 18th at the California Market Center. Join nearly 1,500 fellow event pros at the must-attend event of the year. Secure your spot today at bizbash.com slash expo LA with code gather for special rates.